It is a constant on the Knoxville horizon, a range of peaks and valleys long adored from a distance. I like to say that, that 100 years ago in 1924, uh, more Knoxvillians had seen Times Square than had seen Cades Cove because Times Square was a lot easier to get to. Prior to 1924, the Great Smoky Mountains were inhabited by a few and visited by even fewer. But a woman from Knoxville, Ann Davis, had an idea that grew out of a cross-country trip with her husband. They'd gone out west and saw the wonderful national parks out west, and, they, and, and she said to her husband, why can't we have a national park in, in East Tennessee in the, in the Smoky Mountains? Willis Davis, a powerful businessman, set his wife's inspiration into motion. In a matter of months, he connected with other Knoxville notables, including Colonel David Chapman, who would then head up the Great Smoky Mountains Conservation Association. That group met regularly at the Farragut Hotel on Gay Street. They devised a plan to establish the Smokies as a national park. When the Knoxville contingency got wind in the summer of 1924 that a government commission was meeting in North Carolina to consider establishing a park in another part of that state, Chapman wasted no time getting in front of them. Colonel David Chapman had a great idea. He said to Jim Thompson, Knoxville's greatest photographer, almost prolific commercial and you know personal photographer, to put all his best photographs that he had taken so far in the back of his car and send him to Asheville. That photographer, Jim Thompson, spent years prior capturing the beauty of the mountainous chain. He shared his pictures with that commission gathered in Asheville. The commissioners were just blown away by his photo photographs of the Smokies and they decided to come to Knoxville. Just weeks later, the team from Knoxville led the commissioners on a journey to see the beauty for themselves. And they hiked the, uh, Rainbow Falls up to the top of Mount Lacan. Now that's not the trail that we know and enjoy today. This was probably barely a pig path. By the end of 1924, the committee recommended the Smokies as a new national park. But unlike others before it, the federal government did not own the land along the Tennessee-North Carolina border. And some of them were industrial, some of them were residential, some of them were farms and uh, so forth that they had to, to, to talk the owners out of, uh, of, this, of this property to, to make it possible. The Knoxville Group forged ahead with an effort to purchase more than 6,000 tracts of land. And Davis, who pitched the idea of the park, secured thousands from the state. Everyday people pitched in pennies, but it was a gift of millions from the famed Rockefeller family that made the difference. And they say that day, which, and that was celebrated right here on Gay Street, they had people from New York and Washington here to, uh, to accept this big gift. There were a couple of governors here. It was a, they, they said it was the biggest, most historic day in Knoxville history. It's from concept to completion spanned more than 15 years. President Franklin Roosevelt in 1940 dedicated the Great Smoky Mountains National Park at Newfound Gap. In the years since, the Smoky Mountains have beckoned millions to hike, bike, explore. A natural treasure, an idea that took root 100 years ago in a place, a constant on its horizon, Knoxville.